I created this chart to describe some order of use codes and examples to give a better feeling of what they actually are. So what order of use does is it interrelates stock numbers. It, in, it gives you the relationship between the stock numbers, namely if it's a one-way interchangeable stock number or a two-way interchangeable stock number. And I'll get into that here in a moment. First, let me describe my chart here. You have the uh, NSN, the national stock number, and I abbreviated the rest down here, but just to give an example, you have multiple stock numbers, but they're all interrelated. They're all part of the same order of use structure. Now, order of use is broken into subgroups. The subgroups are divided by the middle letter. The, the first letter, A, is kind of redundant. Every single stock number is going to have an order of use, A, for the first designator. The second one is the subgroup designator. So all the A's in the middle group are clumped together. All the B's are another subgroup. C, it's a, back, it's a bachelor item within a subgroup. And D, same example, bachelor item within the subgroup. So the way the rules work is if you're in the same subgroup, subgroup A, you can interchange any one of these stock numbers and it's not going to matter to the technician on the floor whether or not he gets AAA, AAB, or AAC. It doesn't matter. They're two-way interchangeable, it's called. Going to uh, subgroup B, same thing. Within subgroup B, you can interchange any one of these stock numbers, any one of these four stock numbers, and the technician will not know the difference. It'll all go in. It'll all be by regulation. C and D as well. Now, between subgroups, you can only go one direction. You can only replace something with something higher than it or itself. So if I needed an AAA and they and DLA didn't have one and they didn't have an AAB or an AAC but they did have say an ABB stock number that 7797 DLA can issue that ABB and it'll fill the hole for that AAA no problem. But now the reverse is not true. If I needed an ABB and DLA said I don't have an ABB but I have an AAC it can't go the other way. And let me show you why. Over here I drew some crude diagrams of these are let's call them magic black boxes with two connectors in part A. So here's the magic black box and here are the two connectors. Connectors one and two. All the AAAs or all the A subgroups have two connectors. They're the same. Now what's different about them? Possibly, it could be anything, but here's an example of what could be different. Originally, the AAA was procured, built, engineered. We now have this magic black box with AAA. Well, two years down the road, they decide it's corroding too much. So they create this thing called AAB, the 5678 stock number. AAB has corrosion control that's way better than AAA, so now that's the most preferred. However, we don't have that many of them yet. They're still producing them. We're going to continue to use AAA. It doesn't matter which one you use. It's still going to work. Now, this one may last longer, but you can still see that it's got the two connectors. It's got the same form, fit, and function. And the same thing goes for AAC. Maybe there's a small upgrade that doesn't affect any form, fit, or function. So that's how you kind of get those. Now, even within those, there's part numbers, uh, but we'll get into that in another, in, in another example. Go into the ABA. Now, ABAs, they look similar to the AAAs, or the, I'm sorry, the B subgroup looks similar to the A subgroup. However, they have this weird square looking connector that the A subgroup doesn't have. So, they're just as good, except they have that extra connector. So, you can see how if a technician on the floor ordered the magic box AAA and they didn't have it, they didn't have that box and they didn't have that box, but they happen to have this box. It will fit in the same slot, same form, fit, and function. It does the same thing or more. You can use it. What the technician will have to do is put a cover over this connector, and it will look and act just like the A subgroup parts. Now, can you go the other way around? If you needed if a technician ordered a 7797 and absolutely needed that for a special configuration, could you supply them with one of these A subgroup parts? The answer is no, because the A does not have that square connector. And going down the line, ACA, well they now have included a triangle connector. 
uh, you can use the triangle connector or not. So you can put a cover on it and a cover on the square connector and use it as if, if you put covers on both of these, it looks just like the A subgroup. If you put a cover just on the triangle one, and there you have it. You can use this ACA on a B subgroup because it's going to have both connectors and the square connector. That's what B does. Same thing down the line. I didn't draw yet, but maybe D has the ADA looks something like this. Same form, fit, and function. It's got the A subgroup criteria. It's got the B subgroup. It's got the C subgroup. But then it's got a connector just like that. And we'll call that ADA. And that's how it works. That's why you can interchange only one direction only. Now not every example is going to be this uh, clear on why you can't do it. There could be tolerance differences. It could be a very tight specification. There could be um, the, the specs on testing these parts might be higher and higher grade as you go up. It could be anything. If it's a blade you know, these blades might be for a certain RPM versus these blades can handle more. So the ones that can handle more can definitely go on the least preferred ones, but you can't go backwards because you can't put a blade that wasn't rated for something higher end on that particular part. Hope this clears up part of the order of use and it gives you a clear definition of what it is and why it's important. It's important also for item managers and material managers because Sometimes these are delinked in the cataloging system and become bachelor items. You know, if you take this particular part, stock number, and you delink it, what's going to go on? With, what's going to happen to those assets? Your assets are going to disappear. You're going to end up with these three parts all into the same comp, but not that fourth one. So this is very important for both ESs, equipment specialists, and item managers. For mainly those reasons, also uh, vice versa, linking things will put assets together that weren't normally. With this particular example, you would have one, two, three, four factor printouts of four comps printed out. However, a lot of ESs and item managers will exception link these in D200 so that everything gets rolled up into the master, ADA, which if you're an item manager and you want to procure a part, you want to procure the ADA and not something that's archaic down the line. You want to get rid of these parts over time and keep the uh, latest and greatest configuration that can be used for all. And that summarizes pretty much what the order of use is for and how it kind of affects your job.